Hello friends, in this session we are going to specifically discuss the concept relating to set associative mapping. One of the students pointed out some difficulty in understanding the concept of sets. So uh, what I've done is I've taken up a scenario and then we uh, in detail we are going to study how the things, how the blocks are actually mapped to the sets of the cache in this case, right? So the scenario that I'm considering is that I have a main memory of size 64 kilowatts. Now if I split or if I just convert it into the powers of 2, I get to know that this is 2 to power 16 words. Similarly, cache memory is of 128 blocks. Block size is 16 words. Word is of 4 bit. Now cache property given over here is that it is a two-way set associative. So the first thing that comes into my mind is to calculate the number of sets. Now since I have 128 blocks, so the number of sets will be 64. Now how is it that? Because because it says that it is two-way set associative, which actually means that every set contains two blocks. Now. If every set contains two blocks, then 128 blocks will eventually be divided into how many sets? 128 by 2, which is 64, right? So that's how we're getting 64 sets in this case. Now, if I change this into powers of 2, now why would I change it into powers of 2? To get my this uh, number of bits and what we say this, we call it as the set associative mapping representation. So, uh, since we actually have to find the various number of tags, set and offset bits in various questions. So let's just discuss this as well. So uh, what we do over here is the number of set bits actually represent the number of bits required to represent these many combinations of sets. So what we do over here is we also find we also need to find the total number of bits so the total number of bits is equals to log 2 of size of main memory which was 2 to power 16 so i just substitute it over here and what i get is 16 by using the log property and then the total number of bits to represent set is log 2 of number of sets in cache which is 2 log 2 of 64 which is log 2 of 2 to power 6 which comes out to be 6 then uh, the final thing is the offset bits. The total number of bits to represent offset is log 2 of block size. The block size was given to be 16 words. So uh, what we consider over here is that the entire memory is word addressable, right? So log 2 of 16, which is log 2 of 2 to power 4, which is 4. Please don't get confused with this. I just need to compute the tag bits before finding this out. So let's see how we get the tag bits. Now we have the total bits. We also have the set bits and we also have this offset bits. So the final task is just to um, find out the difference. This difference that total bits minus set bits minus off bits will eventually give you the tag bits. So this is 16 minus 6 minus 4 which gives you as 6. So the total number of tag bits are 6. So that gives me this uh, representation which is tag bits are 6, set bits are 6 and offset bits are 4. So that's all for the representation but we are not ending it over here. We are not ending it over here. We are now going to discuss the detailed concept which will actually give you the idea of how the blocks are mapped into the sets. Now as we already discussed that set associative mapping is basically a hybrid of direct mapping technique and your set map and your associative mapping technique right so after you find out the sets what you do is you just try drawing your cache and main memory diagram so this is your cache and this is your main memory now you have how many sets in this? You have 64 sets. So just imagine these are some 64 blocks present in your cache. And within every such mega block called as set, you have some sub blocks known as blocks. Right. Those blocks are actually the blocks of your main memory. And you also know that for this particular question, you have two way set associative, which I already explained that in every set you have two blocks. Right. So we have split every set into two blocks so this was all for this cache representation then i have my main memory which has how many blocks we didn't compute the number of blocks right so it is very simple just uh, divide the total size of main memory by the size of one block and you'll eventually get it as 4096 which is true to part 12 which is 4096 so that means you have 4096 blocks over here be not to be 
4095 right now we have to do the final task of mapping the things now what is this this is just a decimal representation of your zero index since we said that we'll be using six bits for your set that means zero 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 six times zero will represent your s zero that is your first set then s one will be represented by five zeros and one one at the end and so on so now let's perform the mapping so for the zeroth block of main memory, zeroth block of main memory, you write it as zero mod sixty four, which will give you zero. Now this zero represents the zeroth set. So any vacant block in the zeroth set can be written as this. So that means I'll put on my B not block of main memory in the vacant space available. So as both the things were available, I just uh, placed it into the first cell. Which was vacant over there. Then you compute one mod sixty four for your first B one block. Then this is mapped to one, which is first set. So you place it over here B one. Then you keep on moving like that, and you eventually get sixty three mod sixty four for your B sixty three, which is mapped to sixty third set, and that will be the first block of sixty third set. And then you move on to 64 mod 64, which gives you zero again. So will it be a tie? No, it is not a tie. See, it's zero set, but you have one vacant place over there. This the second block. So I've written B64 over here. So now both the cells of this set are uh, filled. And now if another block will come, then there'll be a tie, right? Then there'll be a. You can say both the things are. Uh, concluding on the same thing and then you have to replace one of the blocks in that case so uh, this was the thing for your mapping concept and I'm sure you would have got an idea about how we actually map the things and this would have provided a clearer picture of the concept so in case it did please like the video in case you have any more doubts please feel free to drop them as comments in the comment section below and please keep subscribed for more good work coming up thank you